Welcome back, everybody. This is Daryl. Good afternoon. How you guys are having a good day? Um, this is the last week. I know uh, th these classes go by very fast for you guys. Uh, they go by pretty fast for me too, but I'm used to the pace now. Uh, so this is our last week, and um, uh, the intense part is over. Uh, this is not going to be as big a deal as last week when you were working with a blank slate. Now you're going to get to refine what you do. Um, I have been looking at uh, uh, presentations that were turned in. Um, I got through about half of the presentations that were turned in last night. And uh, if you haven't turned yours in, it's actually not due yet. There's a little story there, which is that uh, 3.4 was supposed to be due Sunday night for everybody. But I kind of screwed up in setting up the uh, the deadline calendar, and so on FSO, the uh, the the assignment was set up as closing tonight. And once I realized I'd done that, I didn't feel like taking it back. So I'm giving I've given everybody until midnight tonight to get their uh, 3.4 turned in. If you haven't turned it in yet, you're not late. And if you don't turn it in tonight, I'll still allow you to turn it in later this week. So, uh, you know, uh, get it in as soon as you possibly can. I think most of you uh, uh, were pretty good about getting them in last night. And I got it this morning and started going through them. Uh, usually on a good day, I can get almost all the way through the, uh, the first batch. Um, but today I took off midday to uh, watch the Apple keynote. Um, that's always a big deal for me. And... Uh, as creative presentations go, Apple keynotes are pretty much the gold standard, and this was a, a pretty good one as well. So uh, that kind of affected my productivity. Uh, if you have not gotten feedback on your presentation yet, you will get it tomorrow. And those of you that turn it in tonight, you should get that feedback tomorrow as well. So I'll try to get feedback back to everyone as soon as possible. Feedback is the theme of the week. Uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, we only have one more chapter of reading in the uh, uh, Nancy Duarte books uh, this week. It's the last chapter of Resonate, and uh, fitfully enough, that chapter deals with feedback. So what we're doing this week is we're reflecting on what we've done. We're looking, taking a look at the progress we made with getting our uh, first draft in, and we're thinking about how we can make it better. And to that extent, I'm giving you my candid feedback. Uh, you should have your own probably punch list of things you'd like to get done. Some of you actually, as you turn them in, said, oh, I got this done, but I still have to do X, Y, and Z. So I know all of you probably have a list of things that you, 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 you would like to have done if you had a little more time or you still plan to do, et cetera. And then uh, I noticed a lot of you were really good about posting your 3.4s in the uh, discussion board, the 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 uh, three point three discussion board, last week is still open this week, and um, those presentations that have been posted, I encourage you to go and give your classmates feedback, and we're going to talk about um, getting and receiving feedback this week. We actually have assignments dealing with both. Um, so, as we say goodbye to Nancy Duarte, you read the last chapter and resonate. I really hope you take the, uh, the lessons of Nancy Duarte with you as you go forward. This is not the last presentation you're gonna make here at Full Sail, it's merely the first one. Each new class you have, you're gonna have a chance to express your ideas and you're gonna have a variety of tools that you can use. We've tried to show you that there's more than one way to make a presentation. That presentations, uh, while they can be done amazingly in PowerPoint, they are more than PowerPoint. And there are a lot of ways, there's a lot of uh, opportunities, there's a lot of software that you can use to make presentations. So I hope you take a look at what your classmates have done. I take, hope you take a look at all of the different examples that we've shown you and that you sort of keep an eye on things that you'd like to do. Because as you go forward, you're gonna have a chance to make presentations again and again. You have a chance to speak and use your voice, improve the hail in your uh, vocal technique, and each chance you get will make you a better and better uh, public speaker. And I think that in the experience that you're gonna gain doing presentations, 
as assignments here at Full Sail, you'll take that out into the working world and it'll really help you in live interviews and in business meetings with people and just generally working with your colleagues and being able to express your ideas, getting to the point. Uh, you know, what we've tried to do here with, with presentations is make sure that you don't have a lot of fluff on them, that you're actually saying exactly what you need to say and you get it said in as uh, concise and clear a way as you can. So uh, this is the week that we're gonna take a look at what we've done. You're gonna get some ideas from me. You might have your own ideas. You might have ideas from other classmates and you'll make up a plan for how you can make this better. Now, I don't want anybody to start over, no matter how bad you feel about the presentation you've made. The whole point here is to take the framework of what you've done and improve it. If you, if you nailed it the first time around, then you gotta improve it a little bit. If you, nailed, if, you, if you didn't come close, then you've got a lot of work to do. But we are not just making a second stab at it. We are improving upon the original. And uh, to that extent, that's what feedback is all about. You're considering what you've done. You're taking the ideas of others into account and so forth. Uh, and so as Nancy uh, Duarte wants us to, you know, use presentations to change people's minds, to improve the world, get things done, uh, I want you to take her ideas with you and I want you to carry them all. Now, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about personal branding. That's pretty much what this assignment is. Branding was in the topic of the assignment and, and uh, we had a little bit of reading about it, but I didn't went into it in too much depth. In this regard, we're using the term branding to refer to uh, uh, your reputation. Your brand is who you are. It is who you're putting out into the world. And as a creative professional, it is the skills that you're offering for hire. And in the digital world, uh, this is no longer just a face-to-face -face game. Uh, your skills can be presented online to folks that you don't even know, and your work can be seen by uh, people that you've never met, and people uh, can, can have conversations about you that you don't even know are going on. And so maintaining your brand, maintaining your reputation is very important, and uh, it has to do with your actions, it has to do with what you put forward into the world. And so as we think about ourselves, our personal talents as a brand, we compare ourselves to the way corporations act. And it's useful to look at the way corporations manage themselves to help kind of try to figure out how to, how to present ourselves to the world. This is very much about your resume, your talent, or your, your, your uh, seeking a job. But uh, in the modern world, it's more than that one time you get the dream job. You know, rarely do we, any of us get the job that we last 30 years in and then retire. Uh, most of you are gonna have dozens of jobs throughout your life. A lot of you are gonna work freelance and you may have hundreds of jobs. And so you are constantly putting forth your, um, your brand to be judged and, and, and solicited by others. And uh, you wanna put the best face forward that you can, and you wanna make sure that good comments going on behind your back rather than, than uh, dark comments. And a lot of that is out of your control, but a certain amount of it is what you put out into the world. And so as we look at co what corporations do, corporations, as a brand tend to make a promise to the world. Uh, it isn't really about what, what, how your logo looks or, or uh, you know, what your company motto is. It's this sort of implicit notion of this is what we do and this is how we do it. This is our attitude, this is our commitment to service. And so brands that are very highly thought of are brands that make promises to people and they pretty much keep them. And uh, that is what we want to do in our personal life as a personal brand. We want to become known for a particular talent. We want to become known for, you know, 
being able to be dependent upon, that, that you always show up, that you're helpful, that you have solutions, all those qualities that you wanted to talk about in your resume. You don't want to have to tell people that you're a team player. You want other people to tell others that you're a team player. And you can only do that by exhibiting that in the life that you lead. And so brand promise is basically you putting out into the world who you are and what your skills are and what you're actually offering and promising to do. And uh, to maintain that, uh, you've got to be careful about what you say. You've got to be careful about the opportunities that you get into and uh, keep track of. Uh, the main way that you can do that is to not tell different things to different people. You want to be transparent. You want to be crystal clear that you're always telling people exactly what you can and cannot do. I know that people starting out on, in, in uh, the workplace, it's real easy to, to try to exaggerate just to get to that first job. You go into an interview and someone asks if you know Maya 3D and you can just say yes, thinking you can go home that night and watch a few videos on YouTube. Well, most of the things that people are looking for are advanced skills with a lot of, a lot of time on target practice and you can't really get around it. And you need to be honest and upfront with people what you can and cannot do. And if there's a program someone's looking for and you have equivalent experience, you could mention that, but you have to be clear. No, I haven't ever worn this program or I haven't ever worked on these kinds of projects, et cetera. And um, you know, lying about it will always come back to bite you at some point. Be unique. Now, I know uh, a lot of you are very clear about what you've come to Full Sail to be, and that is a general job description. It'll be an audio producer. Well, an audio producer does three dozen different things. And so some of those things you'll be adequate at, some of those things you'll be really good at, and, and there's a handful of things you'll find that you excel at over others. Maybe you have an ear for equalization uh, or something like that. And so that becomes the talent that you're known for. Maybe as a 3D animator, you're, you're, you're pretty good at creating characters, but you're amazing at doing rigging. You've got in your time here at Full Sail to learn what your best features are. And you wanna put that forward because as you're competing with your colleagues, you wanna be unique. You want to put forward the things that you excel at. And that's what you wanna be known for. That's what you want to become part of your brand. Uh, you know, you may be good at the dozen things that make up uh, your profession, but the one or two that you excel at, you really want to put forward, even if that uh, you'd rather be doing other things, because that's what's going to make your reputation. And finally, the third component of, of managing your brand is to not compromise. Or early on, people often take jobs they shouldn't, or they work for compensation patterns that they shouldn't. And it's really hard to say no. You really want to get into the industry. A lot of times people get, get you to work for free, et cetera. Uh, and if you know what you're doing, your eyes wide open, you can afford it. Maybe sometimes working for free is a good way to just get known or to become familiar with people or whatever. But uh, as freelancers, if you keep cutting your price, you'll never get what you're worth. And so it's a very tough thing to do when you're starting out. But you're going to have to learn to say no to situations that aren't going to help you in the long run, you know, and, and it's a very hard thing to do if you're starting out and you're feeling a little bit desperate, et cetera. But one of the things that a long uh, path of schooling is going to teach you in these next several months is that the short term gain is not worth it. You really are going to have to have the long view on your career and on the things that you want to accomplish and that, uh, at certain times, you're going to have to give up something that, that you, you might want to do because it's not going to be helpful to you in the long run. And you, you need to keep an eye out for that. So um, managing a brand or putting a brand promise out uh, is, is about saying to your audience or saying to the world, this is what I do. This is what I will offer you. So you as a person can make a brand promise the same way a corporation can. Google says, we're going to give you the very best programming expertise. We're going to give you great server service. And Google has an uh, online server uh, record that is 
amazing. It's up in the 99%. They hardly ever crash or go down because they have so many redundant systems. They have so many great pro programmers. So uh, the promise that a company makes is uh, the forte that they want to put forth. And you as a, uh, a creative artist will have aspects of what you do that you can put forth as your specialties. And that could be your brand promise. So a brand promise has to be credible. It must be something that's authentic to you. It must be something that's of value to other people. But the most important thing about a brand promise is that it's something that you consistently always do, that you're known for, that you have great uptime, that your batting percentage is high. I don't know how many metaphors to mix here. But the story of what you do is built around the consistency and the dependability of the promise that you make about what you're going to do for your clients or your, your, your fans or your customers or whatever. So thinking about how corporations act is a good way of making you a much better creative professional. Doesn't mean you're a sellout, doesn't mean you're corporate in and of itself. It means that you're a professional, it means that you are consistent and that you are addressing the needs of the audience that you work with. So we want you to think about your brand and part of this week's presentation that you're refining is figuring out what it is that's the voice of your brand. How are you gonna tell this company, this is who I am, this is what I wanna offer you, this is my specialty. And those are important things to figure out. Um, this week we have an, uh, an exercise in giving feedback and then your um, main project, the 4.4 final project, which we'll talk about in a minute, is your exercise in receiving feedback. You're gonna get feedback from me, you may get feedback from others, but um, uh, you want to be able to um, listen and consider what people have to tell you. So one of the main things about feedback is that it's voluntary advice. It's not commandments, I'm not your boss. You know, if I, uh, I'm your teacher, I'm giving you a grade, but when I give you feedback on 4.3, I'm doing my best as a, uh, a supporter of yours to say how you could make the presentation better for your intended audience. Not for me, but for your intended audience. And so the whole point there is that you need to listen to the advice that I give you, but you don't have to take it. Feedback is helpful information from colleagues and you have to consider it. You have a duty, if they're good enough to give you feedback, to consider what they have to say. But in the long run, it's your project. You, you don't have any obligation to do what anybody else tells you. You don't have to make someone else's vision uh, if it is your project. So when I give you feedback, I want you to consider it. I want you to think about it. I want you to you know realize I, I was uh, uh, trying to be helpful when I gave it to you. And if it makes sense for you, try to implement it. If it doesn't make sense, if you think, if you listen to what I say and you think that uh, I'm wrong, that's fine. This is your project, you can overrule me. So note that phone feedback is about this kind of relationship, that you are uh, being grateful for the advice that you're receiving, but you don't feel like it's obligatory. Now, it's very different from a kind of uh, management situation where maybe your boss is going to give you notes and even if you think the boss is wrong, you probably have to do it. Uh, now, there will be some brave ones among you who are, are willing to tell a boss why he's wrong. But uh, uh, in, in the general creative arts sense, if this is your project and you're receiving feedback, you're still in charge. And feedback is simply meant to be helpful, not to meant to be uh, overriding your judgments. So in that regard, I want you to be able to give feedback as well. And uh, project 4.3 is that. It's a very simple, short project. Uh, it's not gonna take you very long. Uh, it's a text project and it's a lot like um, 
1.4 that we did in week one where we looked at a lot of TED Talks. So what we've done in 4.3 is we have three uh, student projects. These are actual student projects. We got permission from the students to use them. And they're pretty good. They're not great. They could be improved. So uh, the feedback project, you need to download the instructions PDF. And here you will see the assignment. And most specifically, you will see the links. The links to the student projects are on YouTube. Uh, I'm also gonna post them in the uh, announcements tomorrow. So if you forget that they're, in the, they're hidden in the uh, PDF, you'll be able to find the, the links there. But each one of these links takes you to a different student project. And I want you to watch all three of them. It's like seasons of like dates, like leaves on the right day. Here's one. Here's another. My name's Elizabeth, and I will be telling you a little bit about why I want to be a concept artist at Blizzard Games. And this fellow's in the military. They caught me by surprise a little bit. I had never seen waves that big crashing into our ship before. So what's interesting is each one is a sort of different take on storytelling. Each one has a different story to tell, but they have a different way of telling it. They use some slightly different technology. I want you to watch all three, and I, you need to pick one. So find the one that you have the most affinity for, and I want you to give that person some advice on how to improve their project. So I just want you to, this is a written project. It's a short paper. I want you to write one or two paragraphs on the one student film you pick. You don't need to pick all three. I want you to watch all three, but then pick one and give that student advice. Tell that student what you liked about his project, what you didn't like is about his project, and I want you to come up with at least one viable idea for things that that student could do to change or improve the project. It needs to be very specific. You know, if you think he should change the music or he should redo the audio or change a slide, you know, be very specific, and I want you to put that advice in the write-up. So I want you to have Advice, uh, experience on giving someone some usable, uh, positive advice. Positive in the sense of not that you're saying nice things, but that it is something that can be fixed or done. So uh, what we need to do is clear and concrete instructions. You know, if, if, if you see someone slide and you don't like the fonts, don't say, I don't like your fonts, and that's it, because no one knows how to change something from that. But if you say the fonts are too thin and it can't really be read from a distance, you should use a thicker font and maybe use this particular font type in, in uh, uh, face in, in, in specific, then that's a, that's a, a, a viable uh, piece of feedback because someone could actually implement that instruction. So I want you to have at least one constructive idea for fixing or making the project better in your write-up. Uh, write one or two paragraphs, tell us what you like, what you didn't like. Uh, there's another question in here I want you to answer. Last week we talked about the pillars of uh, conversation. And I want you to, it, for the film that you picked, I want you to tell me how did the student relate to his audience? Did he, was this an appeal to ethos? Was this appeal to logos? Or was this appeal to uh, pathos? So just uh, very quickly tell me that. And then the final thing, there's a third paragraph that I want you to have that just tells me about what is your ideas about feedback? How do you think feedback will inform you or change your work? So you don't need to add visuals to this. You don't need to do a whole lot. This is just two or three paragraphs written as a text file. You can do it in Word. You can actually even um, type it into the feedback box if you like. Uh, I'll accept whatever is the easiest way for you to type. Uh, I actually think that it's better to type offline just because sometimes when people try to type a long thing in, in the feedback box, the, the, the web page could reset and you lose stuff. So it's better to type offline and just cut and paste. But however you want to get this to me, this is a, a, a just a short text file uh, assignment. It's due on Sunday. So make sure you get that in. And then the main project for the week is 4.4. Uh, and this is just finishing 
the final presentation. So the 3.4 becomes 4.4. And if I look at the instructions, a couple of things that I want you to note, one of the things that we want for the final presentation is that it is self-running. Meaning that if you worked in PowerPoint and you had me click to initiate audio or click to advance slides, then for the final version, I want this auto running. Someone should just be able to turn on the presentation and have it run completely. If you've turned it into a movie, if it's an MPEG-4 file, that's even better because that's absolutely self-running. A movie, all you, all you have to do is open it and it runs. And if you're using something like Adobe Spark, Adobe Spark exports as an MPEG-4 file, and that's a great way uh, to, to turn it in. So you can actually, um, uh, if you've done your present, if you've done your PowerPoint, the way we've suggested to you, you can export the PowerPoint as a movie. So uh, that's a great way to finalize it. You don't have to turn it in as a movie, but uh, we highly recommend it. And beyond that, uh, as well, if you've made it as a movie, we recommend that you put it on YouTube and that you just turn in the link to us because this is your final version of the piece. And while you could keep it on your laptop, storing elements on your computer or locally, uh, you know, they, they're at risk if your computer fails or something like that. And most of you all have free accounts with Google, which means that you have free accounts with YouTube. And you can use uh, YouTube's and Google's servers to store your work. And as a student, every time you finish a project, it's a good idea just to upload it to YouTube. And you don't actually have to make it visible to everybody. If you wanna keep it private, you can set those settings in YouTube. But the nice thing about it is, if you've made this a movie and it's a, you know, a large movie, maybe three or 400 megabytes, and you wanted to share it with somebody, well, that's, an, that's a huge file to move around. But if you put it on YouTube and, and someone, you just meet somebody very casually or you, you see someone and, uh, and you wanna show them what you're doing, it's very easy to send them a link to your YouTube uh, uh, page. So uh, the YouTube place is a great place for storage and it's a great place for sharing your work. And uh, uh, it's, it's something you could use to archive uh, through your career. And so we, we, don't, uh, we don't demand that you use YouTube, but we're just highly recommending it. And we're saying that's a great way to turn things in. But we do say that your final piece has to have audio. Uh, we want you to integrate the audio in the slides. If you've been having trouble doing that, get a hold of me and I want to help anybody this week I can to integrate their, their audio and their slides. But, uh, your, your presentation has to have audio. Uh, and it needs to be self-running. Uh, and it can be any uh, presentation tool you like that you want to use. Uh, and even if you did a terrific job last week and I gave you 100, you cannot turn in exactly the same file you turned in last week. The uh, 4.4 has to be uh, changed or improved in some way. So even if you did fantastically, there's always one more image you could add, one short edit you could make, one extra sentence you could add or something like that. But the 4.4 uh, has to be changed in some way. And in that regard, the last thing I want to mention about uh, the 4.4 project is that in addition to the finished project, we're asking you for a changes list. And the changes list is basically telling us in a short text file, so you don't wanna put this in the movie, you wanna put this as a separate you know, document, and a text file is absolutely the best. Again, you can even put it in the, uh, uh, the, uh, the feedback forum, that's a great place for it. But it's just a short list of the things you've changed. So, you know, if there's two or three things that you did, just list them real roughly, and that's all I'm looking for. I want a changes list from everybody on what they did between 3.4 and 4.4, uh, just to tell me and to help me, you know, look and compare, et cetera, as I'm doing the grading. So 4.4 uh, will be due on Sunday, but um, anybody that needs extra time after that, I will be able to, to give it to you. Um, usually in full sale, classes butt up back to back. So on a normal month, when this class ends on Sunday night, uh, a minute later, your next class is going to open up. 
Um, for most of you, your next class is going to be PYP. It's called the Psychology of Play. It's a pretty cool class that deals with work play balance and psychological techniques dealing with with uh, gameplay. Uh, you know, out thinking someone in poker or those kinds of things. So it's a psychological class that I think a lot of you are going to find very useful. It also helps a lot in time management. So those of you that have found yourself racing to catch up or uh, always, you know, not getting your, your homework done by the deadline and feeling like you need to, some tools there, PYP is going to help you in that regard. Now, this month, however, there is a week's vacation between the end of this class, which will be the end of June, and the beginning of the July class. So the week preceding the 4th of July is considered a holiday. And uh, your cl PYP class may or may not open up at that point. I have a feeling it won't open up until the following Monday. So instead of having a brand new class uh, next Monday, you're gonna have a brand new class two weeks from now. But that also means that that extra week, which is considered vacation time, summer break, hey, go out and enjoy the beach uh, with your, uh, your corona mask on. Um, that extra week is time that I can give you to work on your project. So anybody who needs time beyond Sunday, just let me know and I'll be able to grant it to you. Uh, you won't have infinite time, but you will have time that wouldn't be stealing away from your, your next class. So um, when this class ends, there is a, a, a short week's break and uh, you should be able to get other information about that on the uh, Full Sail One uh, portal site. Uh, and the only other thing we're looking for from you is, uh, this last thing is called Portfolio Competency Self-Reflection. We don't want you to fill this out until you've done all the other work in the class, but it pretty much is your review of what you thought this class was about, what it meant to you, and how well you think you did. So you're, you're not really, you're critiquing the class a little bit. You're helping us to make the curriculum better, but you're also talking about how well you did your own performance, and it's just a self-evaluation. It's very helpful to us. It helps us to make the class better for other students. And uh, you know we wanna hear your thoughts. And it is a uh, reflection in which you can submit as a written reflection or a video. So if you feel comfortable now, just turning on your webcam and talking for a few minutes, then turn it in as a video essay. Just talk to us, you know, practice your, your hail and, and give us your, your true thoughts and answer the series of questions and prompts that are here in this assignment. Uh, but this is, this is not an assignment for a grade, but we do ask you to fill it out for us. So um, that's pretty much it for me. I'm gonna be around all week. I'm gonna be helping people uh, integrate their, their slides and audio that are having problems with that. Uh, and uh, those of you that haven't got feedback from me today, uh, we'll get feedback tomorrow, I, I promise. And those of you turning in your uh, 3.4 later in the week, as soon as you turn it in, I'll be around to give you feedback and, and get you guys going on your way. And uh, any of you that have had earlier assignments that you didn't get done or you want to uh, revisit, uh, <clears throat> some of you still owe me 1.4, uh, you'll have a chance to get those put in as well. So uh, before I take off, uh, I'm gonna ask if there's any questions. Anybody have any questions for me or uh, anything you wanna, uh, you want the mic, just let me know. I'll unmute you if you want to type it in the chat. Um, you, does anybody have any questions for me? All sounds good. Okay, well, this is actually a pretty smart class. Um, again, I haven't gotten through all of the presentations yet. But what I've seen so far has made me uh, very hopeful. Uh, I, I could tell from your present, from your plans, that you guys knew what you were doing. And I'm, I'm at, so far, with the presentations I've seen, I've been very pleased with them. So uh, I, I'm really expecting this class to be one of the best classes I've seen. And I hope you carry that momentum forward. I hope you guys all have really great careers here at Full Sail and.
do really well as you go forward. Uh, I've been uh, happy to be your teacher and I'll be happy to uh, help close you out this, this last week. So uh, you guys have a great week and then have a great summer break and uh, a great career here at Full Sail after that. Thanks. Good night, everybody.